Hey everyone, this is Nate and this is the Nader Tater Channel Art. Today, let's talk about cell phone boosters. And now this will work for boosting your cell phone signal or if you have a cellular based home internet, which I actually do for Verizon and T-Mobile, this also boosts that signal there. So if you've watched my channel, you've seen I've done some other cell phone boosters. In fact, I have one plugged up right now and emitting a signal that my cell phone is connecting to down here in the basement where I get very poor signal without a booster. And so I'm actually very excited to test out this one and I'll talk about why it's so different. So the past two I've tested here in this house are what they call uh, broad boosters or broadband boosters. And this one is a narrow band booster. So I'll, I want to go into the details and help explain what the difference is because this one is more expensive. Um, and I'm not actually going to do the installation and testing in this video, but that will be coming up next. But you really do want to hear um, this explanation because it will help you decide if you want to spend the more money to get this one or if actually a cheaper booster uh, might actually work for you. So if I open up the box and show you the unit itself, it won't look that different from the other ones that I've tested. But let me go through a couple slides. I, I'm an engineer, so PowerPoint slides are, are a um, very common thing that I know how to work through. So I'm going to go through some of those of why this one is different and why you might have cell issues and how boosters fix them. Uh, and I've also done antennas directly onto like a home internet gateway. I've done a lot of videos on that as well and you know those are a different animal and there are certainly cases where an antenna is better on a home internet unit itself but if you need cell signal for other devices you know friends cell phones uh, spouses cell phones not just the home internet gateway then obviously you need a booster to to do that so let's go through a couple of the um, scenarios and uh, pros and cons of this one all right, so first off, you know, I got this from Waveform.com. They don't actually make the Selfie. Selfie is, I guess, its own brand. I think Waveform actually did uh, play a part in some of the testing and development of this guy. And, um, you know, this unit did come from them, so you can buy it from Waveform. I do have links in the uh, video description down below that gets you, I think, 5% off. Um, so it's a little bit of a discount for it. All right, so the number one reason why people want a cell phone booster is because you have poor cell signal and that's causing drop calls or poor you know data transfer or whatnot and that is because maybe you're far away from the tower you only have one tower and it's way far away you have obstructions between you trees buildings that kind of stuff so that is a poor signal uh, strength that uh, a booster can help with and if you look on your phone and, you know, there's different ways to get uh, the signal strength, but like a minus 120 dB on RSRP is basically a, um, you know, worthless signal. Right, so the second cause could be actually poor signal quality. So this is actually in some ways the opposite situation. You might not have several towers that are around you, but they're in different directions and they are of um, similar bands or, you know, what they cause is a lot of noise in the floor and especially if there is a tower out there that is for um, you know AT&T and you have Verizon and your phone has a hard time picking up um, the Verizon one with all the AT&T noise that's around it that can actually cause bad connection as well so that's poor signal quality and both the signal strength and the signal quality a booster can help with but specifically a narrowband booster like this is what can help the most in those cases and just a note on signal quality you know you really ideally want something above 20 db so a positive 20 if you're a negative number that's really bad that means that your your signal strength that you're trying to connect to is actually a lower signal um, you know quality or power than all the noise around it so you want to have your specific signal to be a higher amplitude than the ones around it so you know typically i've seen somewhere around 10 to 15 dbm for my personal so not the best but getting above 20 means you have really good signal uh, to noise uh, quality okay so what the booster can do is one you can place it outside and up high which typically gives it a better signal to start with an inside and then because it's a directional antenna you can point it at a specific tower and it actually does a good job or better job of blocking 
the signal from the other uh, towers that are around you, especially if they're in a different direction. So just the fact that it has that very uh, directional antenna, that means you can point it at your specific tower and it helps your signal to noise quality because of that. And then because it is a booster, it obviously takes that signal and amplifies it further and then it repeats it in your house or barn or you know, building, whatever that you're doing it in. All right, so on any type of cellular booster, there's really four things. One is the amplifier gain, and that's like the booster gain, and that one's probably the most important of all of them. There's the antenna gain, which is actually how well the antenna um, it boosts that signal. All right, then there's the max downlink and uplink output power that the actual unit itself can put out. Okay, but again, the number one one is that amplifier gain, and that's the one that we're going to talk about here because that one is regulated. I mean, actually, some of the other ones are too, but regulated by the FCC back a decade ago. They put in this network protection um, clause, and what they did is they put limitations on how much anyone can boost a specific um, cell frequency or cell um, signal out there and, and as also which ones they can do. And so that's one of the big hiccup is a lot of the 5G NR stuff, none of those are supported because those bands are not supported. So these do support 5G, but it's the 5G DSS, which is not the NR or the new radio. Okay, so here is the key difference. My past boosters have all been broadband. And broadband means that they um, will amplify a whole range of frequencies in a zone. So if you, you know, you've heard like uh, band B2 and you've heard like, you know, N71 is a 600 megahertz band. Well, it's not actually 600, um, you know, 0 0.0 megahertz. Those signals, the FCC sells these different blocks and each carrier has a very specific uh, range of frequencies that they use and it's a different one for download and upload uh, from the tower and so a broadband one just takes all of them in this range and will amplify them which is not nearly as good as being narrowband and being carrier specific and FCC actually puts different limitations so broadband can only be 65 dB gain for that uh, amplifier gain if it's a broadband if it's narrowband you can go up to 100 db and so with it being a db uh, scale that's a log scale that actually is a lot that's 30 db and over 30 db of uh, power difference between those two so that is a lot more strength and so that's a big difference and that's where this narrowband really is supposed to shine i haven't tested it yet so that's what i want to go test and then just to note, if it's a mobile booster, which I have tested one of those as well, they even uh, have less power output capability. So uh, that's something to know in there as well. And, you know, the reason why, you know, this one's about double the cost of the broadband boosters I've had in the past, but it's a lot more expensive electronics. In fact, this is the only narrow band booster that's out there. Uh, so that tells you how rare it is. They have to spend a lot of money on the components internal to it to be able to have that narrowband capability and uh, be able to pick between Verizon, T-Mobile, AT&T and whatnot. And you have to do that when you set it up. Okay, so here is a little example of just how big of a difference that 30 dB of gain is. And so here is, if you have a very weak signal that's minus 110 dBm and you were to have a 70 dB gain on a booster, you get about 300 square feet of coverage on the inside of your house. So 300 square feet, not very big, at 10 foot around the booster. Uh, but if you go to 100 dB with that same exact setup, that gain was just higher, now you have 5,000 square feet of coverage. So you went from 300 square feet of coverage to 5,000. Um, that's how big of a difference it is and that's why I'm really excited to see this guy and how well it works. And now I've always known it, but you know a lot of the uh, advertisers out there that have these really high square footage covers, I've known from my testing that they're not true. And you know this is just one example that it's overly optimistic. And part of the reason is a booster's coverage is based off how strong the signal is. So if you have five bars of signal and you want to boost it, 
it can maybe get that coverage if it was a perfectly open space, no walls or whatnot, right? That's not most people's cases. One is you don't have five bars of signal. That's the exact reason why you're trying to buy a booster is because you have very poor signal typically. And when you have poor signal, like we just showed in that example, you get very poor uh, boosting of that signal as well because of the way the, the amplifier works. So that's something to really know about them. All right, so there's a couple other features of this cell fi that's really neat. It demodulates the signal. So it gives you all the specs and it has an app that really helps you with aiming and setting up the device that the other ones typically do not have and do not provide you. And then because it is carrier specific in the narrow band, you don't run into the issues where a, another provider signal on the same band really saturates the booster and doesn't allow your carrier specific band to get boosted. And that's again with the way that the boosting works. You need a narrow band to be able to really pinpoint your specific carrier and get that one boosted. And then another part that's very important with a booster is getting rid of the echo or echo cancellation. And this is because the booster is obviously has an antenna and is listening to signal, but then it also has an antenna that's putting out signal. You need to have separation between those two antennas so that they're not doing a feedback loop and you're just boosting your own signal. So this has the ability to pick that up and create isolation between those two um, signals. Now there are some downsides to it and that is because it is carrier specific you have to pick a carrier now if you have um, you know you and your roommate or spouse or whoever have different carriers it, you have to pick which one you want to boost and then also part of that it only amplifies two bands at a time so you have to pick which bands are your preferred that you want to pick to boost and then you do need at least minus 120 db outside uh, but again that's you know that's one bar or less on your phone so that's very low uh, quality out there you do have to have the app for proper setup you can't just plug it in and go the broadband one i've tested you pretty much can just plug it in and go the app gives you some more features and settings but it's not required this one you really do have to use the app to go through the setup process especially if you want to change the carrier i think the default one is verizon so if you want to switch it from that, you have to use the app to switch it. It is more expensive than the other ones, like I said, so that's a downside. But if you need signal and this provides it, then it's a kind of a no-brainer. And then lastly, it does not support 5G NR, which is new radio, but none of them do because of FCC. This one does support the 5G uh, DSS, which is you know fairly common and actually more carriers are starting to use it as well. Now, the other reason why I was excited to get it is because it's highly rated by people that uh, maybe you recognize more than me. <laughs> and that uh, that's not only the Amazon stuff, which I always tell people to be careful with Amazon reviews, but this is the only one that offers 100 dBm of gain, and it's the only carrier-specific booster that's out there. And the number of ratings on Amazon uh, and the high ratings tells me that, you know, at least those customers um, think it is good and works for them. And then some third-party reviewers have also reviewed it and, you know, uh, have very good reviews about it as well. So um, that's the big difference between the Selfie Go. I'm going to do a video. I'm going to test it out and um, let you know how the difference is. But I wanted to go through all those specifics uh, to kind of make you more aware of the difference between a narrowband booster and a broadband booster.